Isn't they do wonderful? Come on, give God praise for them. Thank God, thank God for our, our dancers this morning and their expression of worship in dance. This time we're going to ask for Lady Louise Leslie if she would come and give us our announcements. Praise the Lord, everyone. Announcements for today are as follows. Please remember to register. We're still on that. Please remember to register so that you can attend seminars. And if you do register... Just to kind of um, give us a selection as we get ready to for the five-minute countdown. to you, you don't want me to sing. So let's give us something. Okay, come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's start clapping our hands and send the sound of worship of Pentecost. Come on, can we do better than that? This is Pentecost. There shall be light in the evening time. The path of you will surely find is the waterway. It is the light today. Oh, young and old, repent of all your sins, and the Holy Ghost will enter in. The evening time is now. Is the fact that God is. Oh, there shall be light in the evening time. The path of glory you will show down. It is the water of the It is the light of the day. Buried in its precious name. Oh, young and old, we can all your sin. And the whole.
people in our TV viewing audience, I just come to tell you one thing, I will bless the Lord. At all times. And his praises shall continuously be above. Touch your neighbor and tell him if it had not been. No, y'all just said it up. Come on, say it with some feeling. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. this but we are living at the end time and even in the last days and so God is opening up a season of miracles somebody say miracles and guess what brothers and sisters the PCAF is on the word network right now be doing what we've always been doing and that's spreading the timeless gospel message of Jesus's power to set the captives free. Tell somebody Jesus freed me one day. Since 1957 this organization has had some great leaders who have steered us toward heaven from our, our initial bishop presiding Bishop uh, Hancock all the way down through Bishop Bell and Bishop Moore and now our reigning presiding Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr. Come on, give God. I just want our television listening audience to know that you're in for a unique worship experience. It affords me great pleasure, my brothers and sisters, to let you know that God is moving on behalf of his people. Something is getting ready to happen here and if you listen real closely, miracles are being released. The power of God is being released and God is doing great things. Tell somebody he's doing great things. And tell somebody if I couldn't say a word, Come on, say, if I couldn't say a word, I'd just wave my hand. Can I get any wavers over here? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Would you receive, would you receive now, continue to stand as we bring forth the leader of this August Reformation the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith Association International. One of the greatest pulpitters on the face of this earth. Our leader, our brother in Christ. Would you receive now Bishop Lambert Wade Gates Sr. as he comes with words of expression. Bishop Gates. We love Jesus one more time. Come on, let the viewers on the Word Network around the world hear that apostolic Pentecostal sound. turn the world upside down I come here also and so we welcome all of our viewership we welcome you to the 62nd annual convocation of the Pentecostal churches of the apostolic faith we want you now to journey with us as we worship the Lord and our worship team comes forth you in the sanctuary may be seated in the presence of the Lord
Let's put our hands together. Come on. If you appreciate your salvation, give God one more boisterous praise. Boisterous. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and we say praise the Lord to those of you who are in this ballroom that is now our sanctuary. We say praise the Lord to everybody. We greet you in that awesome and wondrous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we stand in agreement with that song of old that said Jesus is the sweetest name I know we herald that name of Jesus we embrace that name of Jesus and we're just so honored not only to be in our 62nd annual Holy Convocation of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International but we're also, we also feel blessed and privileged of God to have this opportunity to let the world share with us this wondrous treasure that we have in Jesus Christ. We come today to the world in love. And we remind you of the golden text of the Bible which said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we're here today to share some of our apostolic Pentecostal sound, because we believe that God has given us an assignment, amen, to get the word out that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. So we appreciate him on today and appreciate all of the, these wondrous men of God who stand with us. Time will not allow us necessarily for individual acknowledgement, but we thank God for the leadership of the Pentecostal churches of the apostolic faith. Let's praise God for all of our honorable men and women who share with us. We have a, a rich heritage, a rich legacy of, of which we're not ashamed as our assistant presiding bishop who did such an eloquent job in the introduction of this telecast. We thank God for our heritage, for our roots. We thank God for our first and founding presiding bishop, as Bishop Ford stated. We want, we want you to know who we are. We don't hide from our past and from our history. And we appreciate uh, that Thank God that this is the organization whose first presiding bishop was the late, great Bishop Samuel Nathan Hancock. And we love him in his grave. Amen. Bishop Hancock, for those uh, who are familiar with Pentecostal history, was the first assistant pastor of our great apostolic father, Bishop Garfield Thomas Haywood. And so, amen. So our roots are threaded and embedded throughout the history of modern day, what we call classical Pentecostalism. This group's roots run back through that. We're threaded all through Azusa Street and, and all of that good stuff backwards and forward from there. Uh, but we don't want you to get us twisted. That Azusa Street represents the modern day revival. But, but our roots run all the way back to Acts 2. Amen. On the day of Pentecost. Oh glory. Oh glory. Amen. And so, so, so that uh, those who are watching us today will know what we're talking about. I want everybody in the room to tell somebody so our viewership can hear us. Everybody just shout out to somebody. That's who we is. That's Amen. 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 We thank God for that one today. Again, we salute our bishops. We're very honored to have in our midst the presiding bishop of our mother organization. Amen. The Honorable Bishop Theodore Brooks. Let's praise God for his presence. And Bishop Brooks will be favoring us with uh, God's word on this evening. Now, we have about an hour allotted to us on uh, this telecast today and um, we want to call your attention to the word of the Lord. I 
struggled in my mind what to minister um, sort of in a, a preacher quandary and uh, preaching may look easy to non-preachers but I assure you it is not it doesn't matter how many times you preach every every time you get up it's a new assignment and we need the help of God and you know some folk are preacher critics but that's cause they're not preachers amen when you have to preach uh, you take on a whole nother perspective when I started preaching amen everybody became a good preacher y'all to get that after a while amen because uh, I knew my turn was coming and so I learned not to be such a critic but I learned to be a prayer amen that God would bless and send his word but I was in a quandary today uh, so much so I called uh, man I called pastor and I, and I just needed a word of affirmation from him today and uh, he told me to uh, stick with what the Lord had put in my heart and what I've been working with the last uh, several days and so I'm going to I'm going to obey those that have the rule over me and I'm going to ask you to go with me to uh, the book of first Samuel chapter 30 and verse number 8 and I solicit the prayers of those who are in this room and and even those who are watching this telecast I solicit uh, your prayers on today and I'm going to stay right where I was right in the middle of uh, this verse uh, there is a question in verse 8 and it says shall I pursue right in the middle of that verse it says and David inquired at the Lord saying then I just want to collect those three words shall I pursue I'd like us to read those three words together this time aloud in unison shall I pursue and uh, let's just say it one more time to let it radiate in this room and radiate throughout the world everybody a few decibels higher in your voice box just shout out shall I pursue, shall I pursue? Amen. the Lord bless you and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord we are reading today uh, from a very powerful text and uh, as you can see sometime technology is good it lets you down and uh, I pulled out my iPad and it locked up on me and so I had to pull out the trusty apostolic phone <laughs> amen and it came to my rescue today but um, there's something here today that I'm very concerned about and I'll confess to you that I've been on a mandate about the last week and a half even as I've tried to pivot elsewhere I continually am drawn back to this text to these words and and I've been sort of sprinkling it along the way I sprinkled it one Sunday uh, morning in Detroit another Sunday evening in Indianapolis then I started salting it along the way here to our holy convocation. And it looked like the more uh, I stayed in it, a little bit more the Lord seemed to be saying to me from this text. These words, uh, I think, have great, in uh, great uh, inspiration for the body of Christ. They're informational, even though they're words that we've read countless times and I'm sure in countless convocations, somewhere somebody has read these words in our churches, in our various revivals. These words have been rehearsed in our ear, time upon time and time again. But I've also found out that no matter, matter how many times we have God's word rehearsed in our hearing, it's important sometimes that we are called back to those things which we have already heard. Sometimes it's the things that we have heard that we have not really heard. Things that we have listened to and they become so commonplace that the freshness of them is lost upon us. And sometimes the implication of those things are lost upon us. And I think sometimes that this text is, is maybe one of those texts 
because it talks to us in, in the spectrum of our walk with God. And I think it informs us as to how we are to walk with God. I'll suggest to you uh, this afternoon that at the outset of reading this text that what is implied here is not a one-time event. It really is something that should inform the continuity of our existence. It's a mindset. It's not just an action. It's not just one single activity. But it's something that children of God, and if, if we're really truthful, it's something that the entire human race should be doing as they are planted here in the earth. God didn't put us here just to be automatons and robots. God put us here with specificity. There's a word that's roaming around in, in various corridors today in the business spectrum and yes, even in the church spectrum and you're hearing it more and more. The word is intentionality. And that's a very important word because it means that we don't do things just to do things, but that we do things with a purpose. There's something behind what we do. There's something behind our endless machinations because all of us know you can live life robotically. And not only can you live life robotically, you can do church robotically. Amen. What, what I mean by that, we're, we're just doing it because we're doing it. And we've been doing it so long until we do it pretty good, but we do it mindlessly. There's nothing at the end. There's no obvious goal. People live like that. They get up, they eat, they go to bed, they get up, they eat, they go to bed, they go to work, they go play, they come home, they go to bed, and they just live their life in sort of a, a, a monotonous outworking. But sometimes there really is no intentionality. And there really is no goal. But may I submit to you early on that God put us in this earth for a purpose. None of us are here to live aimlessly. And while I suggest to you that we're not here to live aimlessly, I also want to remind you that, that you and I are not here to live for ourselves. And you hear people oftentimes talk about, I'm going to do my thing. Well, it would be all right for you to do your thing if it was your thing. But, but it's not your thing. The, the, the psalmist put it on this wise and, and he asked arrogant mankind, he said, know ye not that it is the Lord that hath made us and not we ourselves. The only way we get to beat our own drum and do our own thing is, is that we would have had to have created ourselves. But we didn't make ourselves, God made us. God spoke us into existence. God is the one that caused us to be here in the earth. I've been telling the saints that I pastor that nobody is an accident. And I know some of y'all been told that. Regrettably, some of y'all, your mama told you that. Daddy told you that. You were an accident. But I, I want to I wanna correct that in your mind. You were an accident for them. But you were on purpose with God. There's something 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 about the awesomeness of God something about the power of God and one day we're going to get that figured out we're going to understand that God is truly omnipotent that God is truly in control and and he's so much in control that his omnipotency is intertwined with his omnipresence and his omnipotency and omnipresence is intertwined with his omniscience he's over everything and he's everywhere at the same time. And I don't have time to go in all of that, but if God is everywhere at the same time, that's what it means. He's everywhere at the same time. And somebody wants to know, well, when is he everywhere at the same time? Right now. Amen. Right now, he's in the past, present, and future. I wish I had a prayer in church. Right now, right now. He's everywhere. He's got everything covered. Because not only is he in it, he is around it. He surrounds time. Can I get a witness? He comes out of eternity. He lives in eternity. And because he comes out of eternity and lives in eternity, it means he controls time. Matter of fact, he said, I'm so much in charge until I declare the end from the beginning. Amen. I, I, I spoke it before it ever happened. I put it in place. I set its boundaries. I set 
its limitations. And I told time how to operate. And I, and I, I want the devil to know God, God, God just put it in my mind. He, he says he wants the devil to be reminded that I'm in control of you. You can't do no more than what I let you do. And sometimes Satan thinks he's doing his thing, working a trick. And I'm coming back to that point because, you know, people make mistakes and people make befuddlements and, and Satan and his crafty self because he's the father of lies and a master of deception and has transformed himself into an angel of light. Sometimes he thinks he's doing more than what it really is. And, and sometimes people get all gummed up because we don't understand how great God is. But I just want to remind you that God is so great until he even calculates your mistakes into his plan. Amen. Amen. He knows. He knew when you was going to mess up. And I know we don't like to talk about mess up and dropping the ball. And, and when we're saying that, we're not endorsing people messing up and dropping the ball. But, but everybody somewhere has messed up and dropped that ball. And some people get a little self-righteous just because you didn't drop the same ball. You dropped something. There was something. Everybody, everybody help me preach for a moment. Wake your self-righteous neighbor up and tell them something been wrong with you somewhere. Amen. Something been out of order. Something been twisted. No matter how holy and pious you look today. Amen. You may be holy and pious today, but it's because Jesus cleaned you up yesterday. Got you together. Hello, somebody. Put your life in order. Put you on the right spectrum. But so so but we make mistakes and and the Lord overrules Satan and and he is in control of the mistake. And it takes that mistake and transforms it into a source of our elevation. He takes our mistake and, and he lets us learn from it. And when Satan sent it to take us out, God uses it to make us a better saint. There's something, there's something about God and his power and his majesty. And, and so he's there. He's embedded in our life. And I want everybody to just help your neighbor real quick and tell him God created you with a purpose, God. Now, now just take it another way. Since your neighbor may be saved, tell him he saved you with a purpose. He saved you with a plan. I put you in this earth with a plan. And, and I want you to know that's true even in the scripture because you got to understand that God is working in this scripture. We don't get to this question haphazardly. We don't meander to this text haphazardly. God set this text up at the end of 1st Samuel. God, you know, he's in control of all of his word and, and he's really embedded in everything in scripture. I, I've been learning over the years that there's no scripture that should be dismissed. There's no scripture that we can take for granted. Everything in God's word is important. Jesus referenced it. He let us know it because when he talked about the word and he talked about Amen. How strong God's word is and how enduring the word of the Lord is. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. He said, but my word shall not pass away. And he broke the word down. He said, every jot and every tittle. And, and when he talked about the jot and tittle, he was talking about the smallest etching. Amen. That the scribe can make on the papyrus. Amen. Before you get the word, the little etchings that make up the syllable. God said, I'm, I'm in control of everything. And everything in my word is important. Everything in my word is potent. Everything in my word uh, uh, has behind it purpose. And so everything we need to pay attention to. And, and so there's purpose here. Israel, we're talking about. But you can't talk about Israel without collecting all of the other books that bring Israel together. We don't have time to, to rehearse all of that. But, but the Israel that's in this text is, is an Israel that has evolved. It's an Israel that has developed. They didn't get here overnight. Uh, there was no snapping of the finger. And sometimes, you know, again, I struggle with church folk as a whole because we pretend as if there is no developmental process. We pretend like nobody has to grow and nobody, amen, goes from point A to point B. You know, nobody comes in the church, amen, spiritually mature. They, they have to be mature. And, 
and they have to grow and they have to process and and down through the years we've lost a lot of folk because we don't give God time we want to we want people to to flow like we want them to flow and do like we want them to do but I've learned I've learned even as a pastor sometimes the best thing to do for your members is to get out of God's way quit trying hello somebody you don't grow folk God grows folk you don't develop people God develops people sometimes we get in there and truncate the process but if we look at the scripture people grew people came together Israel as a corporate entity they had to come together you know you know the Bible if we can quickly reference and frame the first five books of the Bible that we know as a Pentateuch there God God was bringing Israel together he was giving them structure he was giving them impetus he was giving them purpose and and even when he called them he called them out with a purpose you go to Genesis the first book of the Pentateuch and there you find Israel called out Israel was called out where in the loins of Abraham God called Israel out you remember he went down in the land of Chaldee Ur of the Chaldees and told Abraham come out from your kindred get out from your mother's house to a land that I will show thee and then back behind that back behind that God had a purpose. God had a purpose. And he told Abraham in so many words, I'm going to shine through you. But this is how I'm going to do it. He said, if you obey me, he said, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to take you. Hello, somebody. I I'm going to make you great. You ain't going to have to make yourself great. I'm going to make you great. You're not going to have to beat your chest and parade your yourself around the convocation dancing and swaying and telling everybody how important you are you won't need no swag all you're gonna have to do is obey me and if you obey me and honor me he said i'm gonna make your name great but i'm not making your name great for you oh y'all ain't hearing what i'm saying see some people miss it because everything is about them but this ain't about us it's all about him this is god's church hello somebody this is God's kingdom. And let me just remind everybody, we are all on stage for God. Can I get a witness? We are all in this play and in this act for God. God is the director. And he tells us, hello somebody. You can't get on this stage and ad lib and do your part. No, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He's directing us. Everybody tell somebody, the Lord is directing us. He, He's showing us the way we need to go, the path we need to trot. And, and so that was for Abraham. He said, I'm going to make your name great. He said, and then, and then I'm going to make a great nation out of thee. I'm, I'm not doing this just for you. I'm doing it for posterity. I'm putting you on assignment. Don't, but don't get the big head. I didn't raise you up so you could poke out your chest. But I raised you up so you could pull somebody else up. Not just for you. Too many folk. Too many folk living for themselves. Too many folk want all the glory. Hello, somebody. Some people, they, you, they want so much glory, you can't hardly sit next to them. Because they take all the room in their chair. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Arms all over in your space. Hello. Amen. But God said, God said, in my kingdom, there's room for everybody. In my kingdom. In my kingdom. Hello, somebody. Tell your neighbor, give me some room up in here so we can... I'll tell your neighbor, give me some room. Don't get on. We got to work this thing together. We got to flow for God together. I'm blessing you, Abraham, because out of you is going to come forth a great nation. And that nation is going to bless all the nations of the earth. I don't know why. You don't know why I chose you, but I chose you because I want to, to shine from you. Israel is going to be my priest nation and and now I'm going to develop you you're going to grow you're going to grow it starts with a seed and and then uh, uh, when the time is right the seed is going to come forth and sometimes we we abort the promise because we don't want to wait on the promise and and, and that, that messes a lot of people up there are a lot of people that serve God impatiently and because they're impatient they're frustrated they're frustrated because the promise has not come to pass, but, but it ain't God frustrating you, it's you frustrating yourself. Amen, you got to learn how to trust God enough to wait on God. If he said it, how many know if he said it, he gonna do it? 
If he said it, he's going to bring. I wish I was in a faith church. How many know if the Lord said it, it must happen? It's got to come. It's got to come. God, God said, whatever I say, amen, it has to happen. I, he said, not only do I expect you to be obedient, he said, my word got to be obedient. Amen. My word. I control my word. I'm in charge of my word. And he said, I send my word out on missions. I send my word. Man, I need to stop. Everybody need to tell somebody, there's a word still out on you right now. There's a word. Oh, yeah. There's a word. There's a word. There's a word. Uh, Y'all don't believe that. There's a word out on you flowing around in the ethos. It's in the atmosphere. Hello, somebody. A word. God, God, when did God say it? I know you got a neighbor, they, they're messing with you. When did he say it? I'm going to tell you when he said it. He said it in eternity. He spoke it before he made the world. He called out your name and, and sent out a word. And, 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 and the word, the word, the word he sent out, he told it what to do about you and for you. And then he told the word, he said, I don't want you to come back. He said, you got to stay out till it's done. If you come back without it's done, you're going to make me a lie. But I told it when I sent it out, my word can't come back to me, boy. It's got to happen. Got to happen. It's got to happen. Let me, let me move on in a hurry. You may be seated, but I need you to tell your neighbor on either side of you, tell them softly but strongly, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Uh-huh. Say it. Say it. Be a little redundant with it. Be a little repetitive with it. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. Don't give up. It's got to happen. Don't get down. It's got to happen. Don't get depressed. It's got to happen. Keep some strength in your spirit. It's got to happen. It's got to, got to happen. I, I told it what to do. I told it. I spoke to it about you. And I, I said, don't come back till you healed her. I spoke to it. I said, don't come back until you save the whole family. I spoke it. 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 So you got to get that in your mind. And Abraham had to learn that. He, he tried to press God and force God and push God, but it didn't happen that way. Uh, he, you know, he got Hagar in the situation. I don't want to get lost there, but, 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 but when the time was right, Abraham and Sarah came together. They had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. All of this is important. It sets up what's going on in 1 Samuel. In the Pentateuch, God is spading the ground. Now, you got, you got Jacob. Jacob, who will be renamed Israel. And renamed Israel, it makes him the father of the 12 tribes. And, and, and what you end up in Genesis is you have a group of, of tribal nomads drifting from place to place but in the land of promise they're in the place of promise and the lord just told me to tell everybody you're in the right place you're in you're in i feel that so somebody somebody came to this convocation with some questions in your mind see everybody didn't come to the convocation to play everybody didn't come to the convocation to to parade around everybody doesn't have a need to be up front Somebody came for words. Somebody, somebody came. Amen. Because I, because I want to know where I am. Somebody came because because I just need somebody to remind me that God said you're still on my mind. Somebody, somebody came. Hello, somebody. I'm telling. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to the dejected. I'm talking to the lonely. I'm talking to those that feel isolated. I'm talking to preachers that are struggling with your ministry. I'm talking to saints that feel like you're all by yourself. God told me I brought you to the convocation because I wanted you to know that I still love you. I'm still holding on to you. Still. 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 I dare you. I dare you. Lay your hand on your chest and tell somebody he still love me. He's still. And so, so you got to get that. You got to understand that. You may be seated. You're in. You're in the right place. It, it, nothing is happening, but you're in the right place. Nothing's going on right now, but you're in the right place. You're, you're moving around in a circular fashion, but, but God says I'm the one. I got you in a whole pattern, but, but I'm, I'm holding you because I'm clearing the runway for you. 
And if you can just stay there in your place, when the time is right, I'm going to land you and make everything work together in your life. So, so that's what's going on. There are nomads in Genesis. And, and then God wants to work things out for them. He's bringing them together. They're, they're tribal nomads, tribal nomads. But God says, that's not who I've destined you to be. I've called you to be a people. I told your daddy Abraham that you're going to be a nation, but, but I got to make you a nation. I got to develop you. And so what happens, there's a time where a chasm is created. A chasm from where? A chasm between the place of promise and, and they are transported down into Egypt. God let them go to Egypt. Egypt, you know about Egypt, don't you? Pharaoh in Egypt and went there often when I talk about them I say they went there on most favored nation status and they, was mo they were most favored because of Joseph and went down in Egypt and, and stayed down there about 400 plus years there they ate and they got strength and they got strong in, in Egypt, in Egypt isn't that amazing? You can get strong in Egypt and, amen, strong in Egypt hello somebody Egypt might be a necessary place, strong, strong, strong in the desert, strong in, 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 in unerable land, strong, thank God, if, among enemies and hostile forces, strong, and you know what happened, they labored there 400 years and then when, when the time was right, because their numbers increased, their numbers increased and when their numbers got to about the place God wanted them to be he promoted an extrication from Israel and 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 guess what there arose that Pharaoh that knew not Joseph and and that Pharaoh began to treat them harshly and and then and you ought to be happy you that are getting done in it means that God is working out your extrication He's working out working out working out a pathway for you charting out a way and and I couldn't get you to move unless I made it a little hostile I couldn't get you to take a step unless I made you a little bit uncomfortable and he told me to tell all uncomfortable people get glad about your discomfort get glad get glad about it get glad about it because because I'm getting ready I'm getting ready to take you back to the place of promise and and so they come up out of Egypt and and every deliverance they didn't work none of their deliverances he brought them up out of Egypt but they didn't bring themselves up we can't tell that story we can't talk about all them plagues but what I can tell you when God brought them out he reminded them he said with a strong and mighty hand I brought you out you know what I love about God all of his deliverances are wonderful. All of his deliverances. Let me just see your hand. Uh, how many, just raise your hand if you've had a God deliverance. Uh, I, I'm not talking about what you worked out yourself. If, if you worked it out yourself, it wasn't a God deliverance. If you could fix it, it wasn't a God deliverance. If you could make it happen, it wasn't a God deliverance. But I, I need to know if there's anybody in this room that has had a God deliverance. I thought it was over, but God brought me out. I thought the devil had me, but somehow God made a way. I, oh, you may be seated, but everybody tell your neighbor, God did that thing. God, God did. Oh, oh, oh look back at them. You ain't got to be ashamed. Tell them I ain't got time to tell you my business. Tell them, tell them the story is too long. Say, but I, all I can say to you is had it not been for the Lord, who was on my side of it. brought me out, brought me out. So they got out. And then now uh, they go through the wilderness. You know that fixation. They get through the Red Sea. We're going somewhere. We get through the Red Sea. We're in the Pentateuch. Exodus. They get to the Red Sea. Moses brings them out and all of the grandeur of that deliverance and, and they were praising God. And we just want to tell people, Pentecostal people have precedent for praising God. We have precedent for making noise because sometimes the world thinks we're ignorant and unlearned. No, 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 we're not ignorant and unlearned, but we have learned from Moses that every time God does something for us, we owe him a praise. Every, every time, every time, every time. That's, that's why we're hollering. That's why we make noise. Hello, somebody. That's why we give God glory. We can't, we can't be quiet. 
when the Lord has made a way. We can't hold our peace. Matter of fact, we are obliged to praise him. We are obligated to praise him. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes we can't help but praise him. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he... I had me a praying church. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor so the world can hear you say it. Tell your neighbor, say, sometimes I can't help my praise. Sometimes I can't help it. I can't help it. I plan to be dignified. I plan to sit still and hold my peace. I plan to be quiet. But then my mind starts having flashbacks. And I have to say, look where he brought me from. Hallelujah, I got the praise him. You may be seated. We got to move on. We got to move on. Got to move on. Take your seat. Tell somebody, I, while you're sitting down, tell somebody, I have to praise him. I, uh -huh. Tell him, I don't mean to upset you today. And I'm, I, I'm sorry if you want to be cute today, but, but I have to praise him. When I remember something happens to me, it sends goosebumps down my spine. When I remember. It makes my scalp itch when I remember. I get a tickle in my feet when I remember. God, I remember God. I remember Him. So, 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 so. I said that. Take your seat if you will. I said that. I said that because Deborah, uh, 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 who was that young lady? Uh, uh, the sister, uh, Miriam. Miriam got the sisters together and they got their timbrels. We we kind of call them tambourines, but but they had to make some noise. Because God took them across the Red Sea. I got to leave it alone. But everybody just say, I got to make some noise. I got to. I got to. I got to. I, I'm not going to leave this convocation until I make some noise. I'm not going home. I'm not going home until I make some noise. And so, so that was their case. And now the rest of Exodus, they should have went over. Uh, but faith didn't. Uh, made the lack of faith made the, that journey a little longer. They got cut off. A uh, whole generation had to stay in, in the wilderness. But even there, God was developing them. And so you see now, God setting up other stuff. Exodus, Leviticus, Exodus, Leviticus, Exodus, and Leviticus. Exodus, you start seeing God. Since they got to stay here in the wilderness, God said, you may as well praise me in the wilderness. And, and so I'm going I'm I'm to I'm I'm set up a place in the wilderness. I would have got you immediately to the promised land, but you didn't glorify me. And so we're going to have to do something in the wilderness. And I'm not going to give you a temple in the wilderness. I'm going to give you a tabernacle in the wilderness because the wilderness is not your permanent place. It's, it's just... It's just a passing through place. But even while you're passing through, you got to give me the glory. Even, even while, even while you're crossing, 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 crossing through the wilderness. And so he said, Moses, I want you to set up a temporary temple. And we're going to call it a tabernacle. And y'all know what happened. We didn't got time to talk about that and all the embroidery and and how the, the, the precious metals and stone were overlaid on one another. We don't have time to talk about, amen, the outer court, the inner court, the holies of holies and the veil. Can I get it? We ain't got time for that. But what I can tell you is God set in place ceremonial law and he was showing us how we would worship him later. And he let Israel know. He said, Moses, tell the children of Israel when they come to worship me, um, there's some things they got to do. There's sacrifices they got to make. I'm going to set some lavas out, lavas, so they can wash their hands in the priest. Because you can't come worship me any old kind of way. You, you, got to, you, got to, you got to, hello somebody. We got too many folk worshiping God from an ugly place, worshiping God from a bad place. Can I get a witness? Put worshiping God. You got jealousy and envy and strife in your heart, worshiping God, mad at one another, musicians playing that don't like one another, choir members hating on one another. Y'all ain't gonna say what I'm saying. Preachers jealous of one another. You can't worship God with stuff in your heart. Can I get a witness? You see, you got to clean yourself up. And, and every time I come to church, I know some of y'all too saved. When I go to bed and when I get up in the morning, I always ask God to clean me up. I, I always say, can I get a witness in here? Some of y'all don't do it. I believe in doing that. Clean me 
up, Jesus. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us because I know you are holy God and, and God, I want to worship you. So Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy. Glory, somebody clap your hand and praise God anyhow. Gotta move on, gotta move on. Get that, all of the intricacy that's there in Exodus, into Leviticus, the same kind of stuff is going on intricate things, all kind of, of, of stuff that, that seems arcane to us. When you read in Leviticus, if you like me, I know you want to be sanctimonious. I get tired when I read Leviticus and when I got my daily reading, when they get my daily reading. You know, you know, every year we try to read the Bible through. Amen. But sometimes Leviticus break us down because we don't know how to walk through all of that stuff. Lord, what is this? Lord, what is that? And, oh, oh my, oh my. It, it's just telling you that God ain't going to accept any old kind of thing. And, oh, I wish I had me a right church. I'm a God of specificity. Let me just put this in the atmosphere. We need to quit giving God raggedy worship. We need to quit. We need to get rid of that spirit that anything will do for God. We ought to want to give God the best, the best musicians, the best singers. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Can I get a witness in here? Time out, time out for running the gong show in church. God, God said, y'all ain't going to like me. I, I said it anyhow. They've got too many folk, too much flesh. I want to be seen. If you can't do it, get out the way. You can't sing, let the singer sing. You can't play, let the players play. It's about God, and, and so God, God is specified, specifies, specifies. That's what Leviticus is, specification in how I worship, specification. Hello, somebody, and how I give God glory. And Leviticus, you get numbers, and numbers, you know, that, that, that really is chronicling their sojourn in the wilderness, their missteps, their misacts, and showing how God interacts with them. Deuteronomy is the second law given because Moses lost out on going over because he was messing with the people and let the folk get in his spirit and he didn't sanctify God at the rock and so he couldn't go over and God said well I won't, I'm not going to let you go over he said but I'm going to let you give the law a second time review it with the elders so they know not to make the same mistakes review it with them and tell them why we stayed out here so long but but now we're going to go over and Moses passes off the scene he wasn't lost he wasn't lost you know that he went up in the mountain top if, if he just didn't get to go to the promised land but he was still close to God because because you remember when he died Satan tried to pick him up but but God dispatched the archangel can I get a witness in here and the angel withstood the devil and he couldn't go at the devil any kind of way because he used to be under the devil and, and so he said I can't insult him Bible says he brought not against him a railing accusation he just opened up his mouth and said Satan the Lord rebuke thee and the devil the devil the devil backed off of Moses can I get a witness and God collected him for himself took him wherever he took him and and we read about Moses later. You move out of that now, and the Pentateuch is over. We're, we're over into Joshua. Joshua represents a new generation. Israel now has ethics. Israel now has a code. Israel now has a law, because you can't be a nation without laws. You can't be a nation without rules. I come today to stand against the first apostolic church of anarchy. I come today to stand against the first apostolic church of do what you want to do. I'm not attacking, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm not attacking Generation Xers. I'm not attacking the millennials. We need you, we believe in you, but it is our obligation to tell you, you can't do your thing up in here. There's some love. Oh, I wish I could talk. I wish I could talk. Somebody help me talk today. You don't do your thing up in here. You don't do your thing up in here. You have your way at Burger King. It's God's way at church. God's way, God's way, God's way. I need somebody, I need, I need somebody to help me talk today. Everybody tell two people, it's God's way up in here. It's God, God's way, God, God. Y'all got to say it, say it one more time. God. 
God's way, God, God's way. You may be seated. Take your seat. Do too much, too much, too much. Everybody, I don't want no law. Oh, honey, we all got to have some law. And you all got to have some boundaries. They, they got to be something that you don't do. They got to be something. Hello, somebody. Got to be something that, that you got to put down, that you got to lay down. Let us lay aside every way. Sin that doth so easily beset us. I don't have time to talk about it. That's not a scripture for pontification. That's a scripture for challenge. Lay aside every weight. And then there is a sin. Y'all ain't reading that right. There is a sin that doth so easily. There's something that'll knock anybody down if God don't help them. But God said, if you let my Holy Ghost get in you, I'll let you lay aside the weight and you'll stand up with that sin that you lean toward. I'll give you help. Hello, somebody. I need somebody that can say, the Lord hope me. The Lord, I, excuse the ebonics. Look at your neighbor and say, he hoping me. He hoping me. That's how I made it. That's how I made it. There's some stuff in me. There's some stuff out there I still like. There's some stuff out there that's still calling my name. But the reason I'm still here is God won't let me do it. I can't take the credit. Tell your neighbor, I can't take that credit. I, I can't. That's why we got to help other folk. I can't take that credit. God, God, just hold on to me. I almost did it, but He grabbed me before I did it. I almost slipped, but it caught me before I fell over the cliff. Almost, almost, almost. Take your seat for a moment, if you will. I got to move in a hurry, but but it's not the the church. I'm calling millennials back to sensibility. I'm calling Generation Xers back to sensibility. I know we did too much to you. We put too much on you. But even after you take off our excesses, there still are some parameters. Stay in the yard and walk with God. Stay in the church. Hello, somebody. Walk with God. Follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Be ye holy for I am holy. God, God's calling us calling us back, back to that place. And, and so that's, what, that's what's happening now. The Joshua generation comes on their nation of laws, but they got to settle now in the promised land. They got the tribes and the stuff. Can I take my time for about 10 more minutes? Everything's got to be divided. The, the, it's got to be divvied up. Joshua is about divvying up the land of promise. It's about handing out what belongs to every, everybody. And this is where we have to understand in the church, we got to quit fighting over the same piece of land. There's a piece for everybody. Everybody got something coming. Hello, somebody. You ain't got to try to take mine. You got yours. And, and can I get a witness? I don't need to try to take what belonged to you. I got mine. And, and so it was about them settling into the promised land. They go over, they go over the first historical book of the Bible and they settle in the promised land. And you just get little inklings of things in, in Joshua. I think in Joshua there's a there's a place called Jericho. A little inklings of stuff uh, that God does pointing forth to Calvary. And, and you remember those spies go over and they find a little 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 prostitute whose name was Rahab and, and somehow when the story gets through Rahab is in the lineage line of Jesus and, 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 and that's God that's God just prognosticating that I give hope to the hopeless and and I help folk that that, that can't help themselves that's God saying I don't care how dirty you are I'm able to clean you up I don't care how ugly you are hell no somebody I'm able to get your life together. And so he brings Rahab into the tree and, and we move out of that book. The roots are, are going on and you move out of Joshua and you get, thank God, oh, you step over one place, you drop by a little book, amen, by the name of Ruth and you got Judges. Judges comes after Joshua. Judges, thank God, is, is that era in which Israel now has blossomed into a confederacy. And what does that mean? They're, they're different units, but they're 
one nation, but they're functioning in pockets, functioning sort of by themselves, amen, sort of a, a kind of tribal feudalism or something on that order, and they're separated in judges, and, and they always get in trouble in judges. Why do they get in trouble in judges? Because they always go whoring after other gods. And they, they're, they're never satisfied. We're going to see that more than one time. They're never satisfied. And, and so they keep getting in trouble. They keep getting in trouble. And God has to rescue them. And so he raises up a judge to come and rescue them. And men and women were judges and they all rescued them. Every time they got in trouble, they got rescued. Every time they got in a dilemma, they got rescued. Isn't that just like God? He keeps coming after us. Isn't, isn't that just like God? Let me see your hand if you know he kept coming after me. He kept, kept coming after me. Matter of fact, ask your neighbor, how many times did you run away? How many times? How many times? How many times? You don't know how many times, but what you do know, he always came and got me. He never, never gave up on me, never abandoned me, never forsook me. And so, so that's what Judges is about, uh, continual deliverance, crises and 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 deliverance. Well, I'm going to say it, crises. Ain't that the story of your life? Crises and deliverance, trouble and deliverance, heartache and deliverance, burden and deliverance. God! is a deliverer and the bible says he brought them out every time to come on out of judges and now things are kind of amalgamating you stop by Ruth to give some more hope we're not going to talk about Ruth but we go down into Moab and and they pick up some Moabites and and look like it looked like you would think the Moabites would be uncommitted but I find out in Ruth those that God has done the most for appreciate him the most and and then, and then you know what happened. It was Ruth. It was Ruth that, that when Naomi told her, go back. I ain't got no more children for you. Amen. Ruth had to tell Naomi, this used to be about your boy, but now it's about your God. It used to be. Used to be. Used to be. Used to be. Used to be about your boy, but, but I done found out about your God. I found out that there's no God like your God. And, and she said, you may as well quit talking to me. Entreat me not to leave you. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. I, oh, I wish I could talk here today. Tell your neighbor, I got to stay. I got to stay. Tell him I got to stay. And then ask him why you got to stay. Tell him because I've tasted of a good thing. I, I can't leave. Amen. I know who God is. Already been to the water. Already been baptized. Already been converted. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes, so Ruth, Ruth, raise that out. And now we're in our book. We're in 1 Samuel. I'm getting ready to close. We're at 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel starts out with Samuel. We're not going to talk about how he got here, but he was here. We won't talk about the miracle of his birth because he was here. But, but when we pick up on Samuel, Samuel is a unique personage. What is he? Samuel is, is the judge of Israel. He's the last judge, the last judge of Israel. But not only is he the last judge, he serves in dual capacity. He is both judge and prophet, judge and prophet. He got a prophetic mantle. He has a judgeship calling. And, and now here come fickle Israel again. Here come Israel up to Samuel. And you know what they said. Give us a king that we can be like all the other nations. And I've never figured it out. After having all that richness with God, why would you want to be like somebody else? God said, when God said, I'm going to be your king, why would you want somebody else? But that was Israel's mentality down through the years. Read it for yourself. They was always trying to be like somebody else. They were kind of like the church of today, not satisfied with who they are. They're like some, some apostolics that don't appreciate being apostolic. They want to be like everybody else, caught up in everybody else. I'm not here to bash other churches. God deals with other people. But, but what I do, am here to do, I'm trying to call apostolics back to an appreciation of who God called us to be. We are not just any other people. We're not, oh, I wish I could talk. Oh, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor we're not arrogant and, and we're not proud. Would you help me say that? Say, we're not arrogant and, 
and we're not proud, but tell them we have a unique calling. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're a peculiar people, zealous of good works, and, and I'm sick and tired of you apostolic Pentecostal church bashers. You don't like it? Get out. Yeah? Oh, I wish I could come. We, we, don't, we don't want you to go, but we ain't gonna beg you to stay. We, we don't want you to go. Don't take me wrong. Don't get me twisted. We love you, but, but I'm tired of us being so self-loathing and so self-hating. And, and, I, I, and when I watch everybody else, they embrace who they are. Our sisters uh, embrace who they are. Jehovah Witnesses, they're proud to be Jehovah Witnesses. And, and, the, and the Muslims are proud to be Muslims. They stand out on the corner and sell their bean, their bean pies. And, but it looked like somewhere it got into our system that, that we ain't supposed to like ourselves. And, and so we watch television and decide we're supposed to be like everybody on television. And, and they define who we are. But other ministries don't define us. Jesus defines us. Other folk. Other folk. Other folk don't tell us who to be. We don't even know how to worship. You may be seated. I, God, I wish I could talk for just a few more minutes. Take your seat if you will. Take your seat. We, we're uncomfortable with ourselves. Uncomfortable with our function. And, and somehow we got it in our brain because they don't like us that we're ignorant. I'm sick of all of that. And, and we want you to be this way. And we want you to be that way. And, and you, ain't, you ain't really ministering unless, unless you get an iPad and something sticking out your ear and, and walk along the floor. And, and somehow that's going to make your church grow because you walk a certain way and look like a, another preacher that's prominent on the TV set. Honey, it ain't about you. Jesus saves. His word saves. Tell us somebody. We got to get we fall into that trap. We don't like the way we worship and we jettison our worship and, and we bring alien elements into our worship. And, and I, I don't want you to get me twisted. I, I have appreciation of everything. I believe the church should be multi-generational. We should hear the songs of every generation. Every generation ought to sing their song. But I'm troubled when I can't hear my song but only the other song. Something wrong with that. I'm troubled when you don't like the hymns that brought us over. The hymns. The hymns. The hymns. The hymns. The hymns. We, we quit singing the hymns. And so our children don't know the hymns. And before we indict our children, we must take responsibility. Because we haven't taught our children. We gave them, we gave them video games and telephones. But we failed to give them Jesus. We, we took them. Oh yes! We, we made sure they made soccer and baseball practice, but we didn't take them to Sunday school. The devil is a liar! The devil, the devil, the devil is a liar. thrown us out of whack. And, and so we got a generation that really don't know God. They don't want rules. They don't want ethics. They don't want boundaries. They don't want codes. But it's not their fault. It's our fault. They don't sing the hymns because we let them sing their songs, but we need to sing back to them. We need to tell them, oh, the blood of Jesus. We need to tell them, thank God for the blood. We need to tell them, I see a crimson stream of blood flows from Calvary. I wish, I wish, I wish we, we had started the telecast a little later. They sang the right songs, but, but I don't know that they heard them. They sang the right songs. They sang Bishop Haywood's song. It was actually written by a woman, but credited to Bishop Haywood. And the songwriter said, there shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find through the waterway. It is the light today. Buried in his presence. Young and old. Repent of all your sin and the Holy Ghost will enter in. The evening time has come. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And it is a fact that God and Christ are one. One, one, one. One way to God. One, one, one. One way to God. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Baptized in Jesus' name. Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the same 
Peter's bride. Come and be baptized into the body and forever more about oh sweet wonder oh sweet wonder Jesus 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 the, the sun you may be seated I, I gotta close I gotta close take your seat for a moment take your seat take your seat take your seat take your please be seated for, for just a moment there gotta get this gotta get this take your seat saints of God we gotta get this in in our system. Look at somebody and say we gotta get that back. We gotta we gotta get that back. Bro. We gotta embrace our apostolicity. Let me make up that word. I am apostolic. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hello, somebody. Jesus is. I'm, I'm trying to stay in the right lane, but somebody just said one time, shout Jesus. Jesus! Jesus, Jesus. Hey! Take your seat, take your seat, take your seat. I'm trying to trying to stay in the right lane. Trying to stay in the right lane. Can I, but can I just say it this way? Jesus is my everything. Everything, everything. Ain't nothing outside of Jesus. It's all in Jesus. The fullness of the Godhead. Oh, all in, all in, all. I'm, he said I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the beginning and I'm the ending. Beside me there is no nobody like Jesus. seat saints of God I need about can I have five minutes five gotta embrace who we are matter of fact everybody just embrace who you are right now embrace oneness Pentecostalism embrace your Holy Ghost that speaks in another tongue ah! embrace. embrace 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 tell your neighbor this then I'll move to a close tell your neighbor we are the keepers of the name we we that's our assignment that's our assignment. As apostolics, that's our assignment. We're no better than other folk. And I don't even know why God chose us, but he chose us to be the curators of his name. We're to hold on to his name. Hello, somebody. We are to call him by his name. Can I get a witness in here? We can't let other folk intimidate us and back us up in a corner. We got to keep our worship connection. And, and I don't want to lose. Uh, and y'all know it. They, they think I'm praise team. No, no, no. Leave the sound where it is. They think I'm praise team bashing. And I'm not. I have praise teams. I got to get this out my system. And, and I, won't, I won't preach this no more after this. If I Can I get it out today? I, then I'll leave it alone after this. We, I, 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 I love praise teams. I, I got two praise teams in, uh, in both churches fine praise team uh, Indianapolis Detroit oh they can sing and I love them amen y'all see uh, Vandalist Echo see one of my spiritual daughters don't don't nobody can, uh, handle that like her she can get up here and work that thing and she know I love her she know I need her but I'm trying to balance the equation because in my church you do what you want to do because there's there there's it's sort of an imbalance where the praise team has pulled worship from the pew and ain't nobody praising God but the stage something wrong something wrong with that I, I just, I'm, I'm nervous I'm nervous I'm nervous I, 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 I still need to hear the saints sing I, I still I still I still look at your neighbor say I, I need to see you clap your hands sometime I, not, just, not just them we've lost we've lost congregational singing and and we need the congregational singing to come back because because when we sang those congregational songs that's when the power swept across the sanctuary drive him way lord drive him way y'all i'm a soldier in the army of the lord i get joy when i think about i remember how we used to sing and a lather would work up in the back of our suit and sisters would lose the perm in their hair but that's when the Holy Ghost started falling. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let the, let the Holy 
Holy Ghost. Come on down. Got to run on in a hurry. But, but tell your neighbor, if you feel like me, say, I long for a fresh move of God. I long. I long. I long. Tell your neighbor, I, tell your neighbor, I long for the day when, when I can go to church and, and not have a show, but, but just feel the quickening power. I, I long for that day. Long for that day. Sometimes I don't want pretty singing. I want ugly singing. Sometimes. Sometimes I just need to make a joyful noise. Sometimes. Sometimes I just need to get up and holler. I want to do my own thing. I don't want to do it with finesse. I don't want to bob and weave. I, I just want to sing the songs of Zion and, and let God know that I still appreciate him. My, my time is gone. I, I've got to head to my seat. Take your seat for one more moment. I, I need about, can I have four more minutes? Look at your name. Say, give him four more minutes. I don't have time to tell everything. I don't have time to, to talk about Samuel. And tell you about the dilemma. Samuel had a crisis and, and Samuel, Samuel got nervous and told God they don't want me but, but, but God had to help Samuel and, and say Samuel it ain't about you they, they haven't rejected you they have rejected me and, and so you know what they happened they ended up thank God with Saul as their king and Saul wasn't the right king for them you may be seated for a moment uh, I'm getting ready to close take your seat please uh, getting ready to close right now Saul uh, wasn't the right kind of king. Uh, he was a fleshly king. Uh, he was a king that they desired. Uh, you got to be careful what you pray for. You got to make sure that your prayer is God's prayer. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Because the Bible said he gave them their request, uh, but sent leanness to their soul. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I pray, uh, I, I always want to tell God, Lord, if it ain't for me, don't do it for me. Uh, Thy will be done. Wish I was in the right church. You don't have to get on your feet, but shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I want his will to be done in my life. If it ain't for me, I want God to stop it. If I don't need it, I want God to cut it off. They didn't, they didn't pray. They prayed a carnal prayer. And so they ended up with a carnal king. And Saul was his name. If I had time, I'd tell you about Saul. I'd run down his pedigree. I'd tell you about his Benjamite heritage. I'd tell you how arrogance ran in his family tree. Arrogance was in his pride because Benjamin was the youngest son of Jacob that he had by the wife he loved, Rachel. I tell you how Benjamin was protected covered, thank God, from all kind of stuff. Uh, I don't have time to tell you how arrogant Benjamin was. Uh, I'd go to judges and tell you how Benjamin, when they should have gave up those bad men, they wouldn't give them up because of pride and thousands died that day. Saul came from the tribe of Benjamin and did stuff he never should have done. He intruded into the office of the priesthood and God <clears throat> had to straighten him out uh, and say obedience is better than sacrifice. Saul <clears throat> was so caught up in himself uh, that he participated in necromancy. Uh, somebody shout glory uh, and consulted with the witch of Endor and they conjured up <clears throat> something that looked like the spirit of Samuel uh, and had a seance if you please. Uh, but you know the Bible story, when God got tired of Saul, he went and found himself another king. This time he said, I don't need a king of the flesh. I'm going down to the tribe of Judah, because you can, I can always trust a worshiper to serve me. I can always, I, I wish I was in the right church. Look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, Y'all not going to help me. <laughs> Say, hey, neighbor, <laughs> are you one of those that God can trust? <laughs> and look for the answer, <laughs> but don't believe the answer. <laughs> if they've been sitting next to your cool all service long, <laughs> don't believe the answer. <laughs> if they haven't clapped their hands yet today, <laughs> don't believe the answer. <laughs> if you ain't seen them rocking a little bit, because <laughs> God is a spirit, <laughs> and they that worship him, they got to worship him in spirit and truth. Uh, look at your name if you're the real thing and say, I, 
I wanted them that God can trust uh, because I praise him uh, and then ask him, how often do you praise him? Uh, tell your neighbor, I can't tell you how often, uh, but say I'm always looking for a reason. Uh, I'm always looking for an excuse. Uh, I will. I bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, his praise shall continually uh, be in my mouth. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, I don't know what you come to do, uh, but I come to praise the Lord. Uh, I wish I had some praises in here. Uh, let me see the praises uh, wave their hand. Uh, let me hear the praises. Open up your mouth and shout glory. Shout glory. I gotta get ready to go to my seat. Uh, shake somebody's hand and say praise is what I do. Uh, when I woke up this morning, uh, I had him on my mind. Uh, uh, that men uh, would praise the Lord. Uh, can I see some praises in the house? Uh, my time is gone. Uh, I got to go to my seat. Uh, if I had time, I'd tell you about the next king. Uh, I'd tell you about David, uh, who was a worshiper of God. Uh, David, uh, that was so anointed uh, until he played the harp uh, and drove the demons away. Uh, but time won't allow me to tell it. Uh, but all I can tell you is he got the anointing uh, to be king over Israel. Uh, but he waited his turn. Uh, when we read this text, he was still waiting. Uh, he was anointed, uh, but still waiting. Uh, shake somebody's hand and say, I'm just like David. Uh, I'm anointed, but still waiting. Uh, it's going come after a while but while I'm waiting I'm gonna praise him while I'm waiting I'm gonna thank him while I'm waiting I'm gonna give him the glory while I'm waiting I'm gonna open up my mouth and tell God thank you and so we waited on God and you know what the Bible said when the time was right started flowing forth. Uh, Saul uh, was tied in the people worship uh, and he got happy when they said Saul have slain his thousands. Uh, he thought David was cute uh, when David slew Goliath. Uh, but after a while, uh, when he got a few more victories under his belt, uh, the women added a second verse. Uh, they didn't throw Saul out. Uh, they still sang about his thousands. Uh, but they said David uh, have killed his 10,000 and Saul couldn't handle it because he was riding on people praise and not on the anointing shake your neighbor's hand and say when you've been called by God it don't matter what folks say because folk don't make you it's God that makes you folk don't put you in your place it's God that puts you in your place I heard the Bible say Somebody shout glory. I heard, I heard the Bible say that Saul picked up a javelin and tried to nail David to the wall. I can't tell this story, but when David realized that Saul was out to kill him, he went down to the city of Gath. He said, I got to go somewhere. I can't go home because Saul is out. And so I go to Gath and line up with an Achish, king of the Philistine. It's bad when the church don't want you. It's bad. I wish I was in the right church when you're caught between the church and, the, and your enemy. It's bad when you're trying to serve God and the people in the church don't understand you and they put so much pressure on you. You got to lean in the direction of your enemy and that's where David was. He was down in Gath and he made an alliance. Thank God with the king of the 
the Philistine. I don't believe he meant it in his heart, but he was just trying to get along. And he told King Achish, I'm down here to stand with you, but I believe he was working a trick. And Achish, Achish, he said, Achish, if you accept me, I need a place to be in. So send me down. Thank God to Ziglag. And that's where David and his 600 men ended up. They were down in Ziglag. And the king told him, I'll let you stay there. But when I need you, you've got to come forth. And just a little while later, the Bible says the Philistines declared war. Thank God against the house of Israel. And they sit down and called David forward and told David, you got to fight with me. Matter of fact, I heard Achish tell the man of God, you got to be my personal God. You and your 600 men, they got to stand around me and fight until the bitter end. And David didn't know what to do. He didn't want to fight against Israel. But I'm so glad that when you can't help yourself, God will come to your rescue. Somebody help me preach and shout glory. Reach over and shake your neighbor's hand and say, hey, neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. For every time I get in trouble, he come to my rescue. I didn't hear you say it. Say it another time. Say, hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Every time. Y'all ain't saying it to nobody. Say, every time I found myself in trouble, God always came to my rescue. And I heard the Bible say that when he couldn't get it together, I heard the Bible say that the captains in the army of the Philistine, they went down and told the king, you can't take David to fight with us. You got to send him on back home. I'm so glad that every now and then, God will use your enemy to speak up for you. Every now and then, God will use your enemy to work it out for you. Every now and then, God will use your enemy to work a favor in your behalf. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory another time. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, hey neighbor. The preacher told me to stop by and tell you whatever's gone down in your life is working for your good. Whoever turned against you is working for your good. Whoever put a dagger in your back is working for your good. Somewhere and somehow there's a blessing in it. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. Would you tell two other people in it a hurry? Tell them God said there's a blessing in it. Say it another time. Tell them God said there's a blessing in it. David got sent back home. And when he went back home to Ziglag, y'all know what the Bible said. When he got back to the town, everything was gone. He looked and everything was tore up. The tents had been torn down. The pots had been turned over. The fires had been put out. When he looked around, his wife was gone. His children were gone. No boys, no girls. Silver was gone. Gold was gone. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory another time. And I heard, I heard the Bible sing that David overheard in the background the men of Israel murmuring among themselves. They say we need to gather up stone and stone David right now. What do you do when everybody's turned against you? What do you do when pressure's on every side? I wish you'd help me preach today when you look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, what do you do when everything gone bad? What do you do? 
when your friends have walked out on you. But I heard, I heard the Bible say, David, encourage himself in the Lord. Oh, I need it. 
Sunday. I need everyone altar workers you can come. He come I'm on Sunday. I promise you And I'm standing in front of God's people and God's holy men and women at the International Holy Convocation. I promise you, I wanted to preach another message today. I didn't want to revisit this text and, and maybe it was my preacher pride I stayed up half the night, a little frantic. What are you gonna to say to God's people in the morning? But God, God said, tell them, pursue. If you want to be saved, you can come. Please, no walking just yet if you don't have to. If you want to be saved, you can come. You want to be 
baptized in Jesus' name. You can come. You want to be baptized in Jesus' name. You can come. You want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Comes with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. You can come. If you're a backslider, the Lord told me to tell you, your stuff is still alive. You just need to come get it. If you're here, step out in the aisle. Come to the front of this room. If you're afraid to come by yourself, ask somebody to walk down with you.